the epistles, so I, I go up the steps. Do I bow? Do I bow my head when I pick up the epistle before I do that, or, or what is it? I don't. I don't I bow my head only at the name of Jesus. Okay. So yeah, you're gonna you're gonna be over here next to me. Right.
second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us.
The epistle is written in the second chapter of the epistle of 1 St. Peter, beginning at the, at, night, at the 19th verse. This is thankworthy. If a man, for conscience toward God, endure grief, suffering wrongfully, for what glory is it if, when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if, when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow in his steps, who did not, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. Who his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God.
lamentations of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, my strength and my redeemer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. They say millions of people suffer from lack of sleep, which is called insomnia. This happens due to insecurity, joblessness, or the depressing situation around them, whether be it of uh, uh, sickness, or insecurity of a job, or the financial uh, uh, situation, or the inability to pay bills, or even meet their basic needs. People lie awake through the night, worrying. Anxiety has a huge impact on society, which is why God reassures us that we don't need to fear because I am here for you. We just now sang the beautiful Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. As long as we recognize the power and the presence of God with us, that this is a good shepherd as he spake in the gospel, who is willing to lay down his uh, life for a sheep. Not only did he say, but he did it, which we saw, walked, trusted, and accepted, and believed, and continue to believe in the power of his passion, death, and resurrection. This is the good shepherd who is with us. It is told that Hudson Taylor, the founder of China Inland Mission, used to hang in his home a plaque with two Hebrew words on it, Ebenezer and Jehovah Jireh. They meant, hitherto had the Lord helped us, and the second one, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will see to it or provide. One looked back while the other looked forward. One reminded him of God's faithfulness and the other of God's assurances. Today's morning prayer, Psalm 23, had us reflect on this very words. I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. For a sheep, the rod was a defensive weapon against the intruder, against the attacker, who otherwise might prey on the sheep. And the staff is the one by which the shepherd could guide the sheep and also pull it out of dangerous situation. So, thy rod and thy staff will comfort me. When these two are there for the sheep, there is nothing to be afraid of. There is no danger. The good shepherd can get them out. I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We also sang and prayed, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. This is a promise of God, of heaven. The promise that he has prepared for us a place in heaven, and that all who are faithful disciples of us will certainly inherit the kingdom of God. The gospel pictures of Jesus as the Good Shepherd has often been interpreted too sentimentally. Sentimentally, it's very nice to see. If you open your uh, um, flyer, you will find uh, a small insert. The Good Shepherd window that we have, or also with that, there are beautiful quotes of the Lord's assurances, a good thing to put on your refrigerator, to remind yourself whenever you open your fridge that God is with you. Anyway, it is so beautiful to see the picture in the chapel, as also in the picture, as a very, very benign, gentle, shepherd who is willing to take care of us, who has gone that route taking care of us. It's very beautiful indeed. But it was not easy for the Good Shepherd to endure such difficulties, such pathways. Pretty things are said about the sheep and the shepherds, but in biblical scenes, behind all the intimacy and pastoral care, there are always lurk the hidden danger. The Good Shepherd will give his life for the sake of the sheep. I will lay down my life for my sheep. And I am giving my life for the sake of my sheep. This point is taken up in the epistle of today too. Christ suffered for you. He personally bore our sins in his own body 
on the cross. Therefore, the Good Shepherd is shown doing something beautiful for a sheep that the sheep are powerless to do for themselves. The powerlessness is expressed in the college of the day as we pray today. Christ came to be unto us a sacrifice for sin. This is the inestimable benefit we pray, always most thankfully to receive. What does it mean then to be a Christian, to be a disciple of Christ? To be a Christian means accepting the sacrifice of our Lord, not only as the means of our salvation, but also our ideal for daily living. In the epistle again, we notice how St. Peter clarifies this plan. He left you a personal example and wants you to follow in his steps. The Lord's death on the cross was that we might be dead to sin and be alive all that is good. And so we pray to endeavor. The meaning of the word endeavor means that is to make it our duty. We pray to endeavor to follow the blessed steps of him who left as an example, the example of godly life. There was a party which was attended by a very famous actor. The actor was being hassled by the guests of the party to recite some Shakespearean or do a bit of Dickens. The actor said, okay, and recited it beautifully, full of emotion and conviction. Everyone clapped wildly and says, well done to him. There is an elderly vicar seated amongst the guests and he says, what about Psalm 23? And the actor says to him, okay, but only if you do it too. The vicar agrees. The actor starts off and recites it expertly. The guests are impressed. Then it's the turn of the vicar. He recites Psalm 23. It's not perfect and it's not polished but somehow the rest of the guests cannot take their eyes of him. There is something in his voice which has left them mesmerized. A fellow guest inquired, Why is the vicar's recitation so powerful? The actor replied, Ah, I know Psalm 23, but he knows the shepherd. We know, we may know, the scripture, but we know our Jesus, our good shepherd. And to know him means to love him, to embrace him, cling on to every word of us, make his word our path that we will follow accordingly. Live our life day to day, pleasing him and him alone, to his glory, to his honor, to his edification. The God will be pleased to see in us faithful disciples. So when we pray the psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. Really, we need to ask ourselves a question. Who is my shepherd? Really. Is there other people who are my shepherds, who are my leaders, who I'm trying to emulate, imitate? Or is it the person of Christ who loved me and gave himself for me on the cross? God has only promised one thing, that he is Emmanuel, he is God with us, that he is our shepherd. He is not the one who is going to abandon us and run for his life to save his own life. No, he proved it otherwise. He stood the ground, met the challenges, faced the enemies, and he died to death. A death that, a singular death that would mean so much for the past, for the present, and for the generations to come. It is by His blood that we are washed. We are washed truly in the blood, in the precious blood of the Lamb. And if we are truly washed, how could we go and roll ourselves in the muddy world of sin time and time again? How could we ever think of really dirtying this white garment that we are donned with? at the time of our baptism, when we accepted to follow Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, when we accepted to reject sin and the author of and the father of lies. It is up to us to rely on the power and the presence of God. Today, when we shall go home and pray this very psalm, pray it in the silence of our hearts.
Today we are celebrating the feast of the Good Shepherd. It's a Good Shepherd Sunday, the second Sunday in uh, the um, Easter week. The flowers on the altar are offered to the glory of God. Please do not forget to offer them on your special days, on anniversaries, on your birthdays, in remembrance of your loved ones as well. Kenji Houston celebrates his uh, birthday on April 20th. We wish him a happy birthday and God's blessing. He's serving there at the altar for us today. And uh, I am very thankful for the hot shams also for taking their time to come during the weekdays to prepare themselves to serve at the altar. It's wonderful. Also, uh, after the Mass, uh, all those who are serving at the altar, we will go uh, through the service with uh, Mr. Bob Klein. He will be uh, coordinating the service uh, at the altar. So uh, immediately after the mass, we will gather here and then go through the um, altar service booklet. We've been having a Spanish mass at 1:30 p.m. every Sunday, and there are a few people. We have had about 12 to 18 people come attend, and then uh, uh, they come. You know, it depends how many come. On a particular Sunday, and we have just begun this service, so hopefully, it will uh, continue to help them also in their sacramental um, ministry to them as well. Let's pray for Steve. I think he's not well, and also, um, there are some people who are listed in our uh, bulletin. Um, next Sunday, uh, the choir and also the altar servers, if you could be dressed, I would like to take a picture of you for. Uh, our web page of St. James. And all those who are serving would like to have them together so that uh, we can uh, make that uh, possibility available for those who are seeking to serve the Lord. So if the choir and also the um, all the altar servers would you could be uh, vested in your uh, respective uh, garments, please do so. Next Sunday we'll have a picture taken immediately after the Mass. That's all for the announcement. Anything else I must talk so Thank you, sir. Also, don't forget that our synod is coming up. The provincial and the diocesan synod is going to be on the 10th, 11th, and 12th. No, 11th, 12th, and 13th of June. So our uh, uh, church is going to host the synod. So uh, please, if you would like to be involved in some way to help with the synod, please do, um, or the conduct of the synod, please do um, volunteer yourself and uh, let me know. Thank you so much. Today's Holy Eucharist is offered to the great glory of God and for the salvation of souls. Brethren, pray that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive this sacrifice of our hands to the praise of the Lord and the Lord, both our benefit and all the Holy Church. Amen. Let us pray. May this holy oblation ever confer upon us the saving prayer blessing. O oh Lord, let what is set for the ministry may be fulfilled in power. So let mercy, O oh Lord, and the intercession of this may be virgin. May this oblation further our prosperity and peace. O oh, Lord, for us, given us now, O Lord, who wait upon thy mysteries that be cleaving to heavenly things, may serve thee both in mind and body. Those who are celebrating birthday, Watch over thy child, Kenji, O Lord, and his days increase, bless and guide him wherever he may be, keeping him unspotted from the world, strengthen him when he stands, comfort him when his spirit is sorrowful, raise him up if he falls in his heart, may thy peace which has understanding abide all the days of his life, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's pray for the whole state of Christ Church. Almighty and Holy God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications. And give thanks for all that we humbly receive thee, most merciful to accept our alms and donations, and to receive these offerings which we offer to thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church by the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who confess thy holy name may gain the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to direct in this both hours of all Christian rulers, that we may truly and impartially administer justice 
to the punishment of wickedness and vice and maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, our Holy Father, to all bishops, priests, deacons, other ministers, that they may both by the light and doctrine set for thy true and lively world, and truly and rightly duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy holy grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that will make heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we both humbly beseech thee, O thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, we pray for all our people, for thy grace <coughs> and thy blessing, for their health and well-being, and for thy peace and thy grace in their lives, especially for Bishop Gleason, Deacon Jim King, Margaret, Baxter, Chuck, Jack, Henry, Kevin, Thecla, Leo, Trenel, Sarah, Sandy, James, Terry, Jane, Sandra, Deacon Bromit, Hunter, Stuart, Phelps, Gerald, Steve, Kitty, Alvin, Cynthia, Amanda, Doug, Phelps, Grace, Chris, Kim, Dan, Becky, Sandy, Casey, Our Father Hathaway, Holly, and we also bless thy holy name for all thy souls departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them particular growth in the love and service, and to give us grace so to follow the great examples that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant us, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. He who truly and earnestly repent of your sins and our love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking forth henceforth in his own ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your own confession to Almighty God, your holy name. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, make a 